welcome. I am sitting here in South Africa and this is a country with roughly 54 million people and there is one sector that is making such an enormous impact. 15 million people every day use the products that they finance or support in some shape or form. I'm talking about the South African taxi industry. I am sitting here with Maroba Maduma and I would like to understand a little bit more about this incredible sector, which is not even a formal sector, it's not even considered, and yet it plays such a crucial part in the South African economy. Can you tell me a little bit more about the South African taxi space? Um, so thank you. Um, the, ta the specific industry that we're speaking about is the minibus taxi. That's the fixed route minibus taxi industry. That's guys who wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning so that they can start transporting people. That's 15 million people a day that we speak about. They can start transporting them from point A to point B daily. Um, and they, they operate in these minibus taxis and it's been happening since the 1960s, mm -hmm. right? Complete and utter entrepreneurial. Uh, these are guys who have traditionally had to use older cars, and that's why of the 250,000 estimated taxis on the road, we are, we are working, as I say, taxi consciously to help them recapitalize their fleets because some of them uh, might be a little bit older than, um, than others. But the industry has been around since the 60s, like I've said, and as guys who, their main role is to actually drive and keep the economy moving. Because if you can imagine, Simple, simple thing like in South Africa we have obviously um, helpers that, that, that need to go from the townships which mm -hmm. tend to be quite far from, 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 from the suburbs and, and, and from, 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 um, from where the, 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 the main hubs of, 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 of business are. And they need to get from there to those houses yeah. before, our, before the executives get to work because they need to relieve them because they get there to take care of their kids so that the executives can go out and, 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 and make money uh, in, their, in their corporate sector. If the taxi industry did not exist, that specific helper would not be able to get to the um, to the house. So that's the crucial role they right. play. And a lot of the working force in South Africa, you know, um, that, that 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 works in, 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 in different positions in companies, a lot of the middle class in South Africa still use this transport system. It transports sixty six and a half percent of all people that use public mm -hmm. transport in our country. And is the SA taxi the company? Did it come about to service the need of the taxis or was it something that grew together? So the taxis were around before SA Taxi okay. was around. Um, but the difficulty for the taxi owner has always been access to funding. Mm -hmm. So for him to be able to access to credit, uh, for him to be able to, to, to buy a new taxi, to, to grow his fleet so that he can service the needs of the people that we spoke about, was difficult because traditionally they are seen as an extremely high risk from a credit perspective. Why? So a lot of them are unbanked and, and it's a lot of people who are previously disadvantaged, people who don't have uh, the greatest educational background, people from the rural sectors, yeah. uh, people from townships. So it's, it's people who, are, it's a previously disadvantaged people of this country that don't have not traditionally had the same access to, to, to education, the same access to funding uh, as, a, as a consequence. Yeah. And banks these days would look, traditional banks would look at, you know, whether or not you have a job or whether or not you've got a credit history or whether or not, and those things aren't necessarily things they have because they are tradition, because they're previously disadvantaged, okay? So that's meant that financial inclusion was never there for them, okay? So, um, where, where, when we came into it, we, we understood also a part of the risk that the banks saw, the traditional banks saw, was that they didn't understand how the industry works. So they don't know which routes are profitable. They don't know whether or not this guy's going to pay them back. And the biggest other problem, they don't see them as entrepreneurs. Interesting. So when, they, when most banks would finance these people, they would finance them as a personal finance, which means that there were no services and allied services that an entrepreneur would need in order for, for the business to succeed. So we saw that opportunity to say, firstly, there's a need for access to finance. Yeah. So we started out as a credit provider where we, it's, it's the developmental credit because again, to get that funding where, where, where the traditional funders would see it as a high risk was a little bit more difficult, where we then had to go more for impact funding, a lot more the developmental uh, funding where- Is that throughout the journey or was just to kickstart the To this day. 
Uh, to this day, we, we, we operate under the Developmental Credit Act, um, which, which then is specific to help the needs of the previously disadvantaged mm -hmm. and people who didn't have access so that you can create an impact on the general uh, community which, with which we serve. And um, we, we obviously then started getting, getting some, 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 some funders who understood as we took them to through, through what we are trying to do. So our holding company is a listed company called uh, Transaction Capital. Right. So, so, so that also helps that you, 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 are, you, you are part of a listed company uh, to, to, to try and drive the, 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 the funding as well. Um, over the over the years, as we were giving funding to, uh, as we were giving credit to the taxi owners, we also realized that one of the other barriers to entry, when it comes to financial inclusion, is insurance. For every for every credit agreement you have, you must have comprehensive insurance cover, right? But again, the same issues that the taxi industry was facing where they were not understood in terms of how they operate, they couldn't be underwritten the right way. So the, guy, the, 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 the traditional insurers would now rate them extremely highly. So now all of a sudden you've got a guy who's trying to end, make ends meet, this new entrepreneur who's got the spirit and he's got this idea, you've given him a, a access to, find, to credit, and now he can't make ends meet himself because he also, this is also his primary source of income. So now he can't make ends meet because he must pay 4,000 rands to, to insurance. I mean, that's now becoming exorbitant. So we then started exploring after having been in the industry, in, 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 in the business for a little while, why don't we start creating products that are affordable and are actually designed specifically for the taxi industry? And that's when we opened up our insurance business, where, again, with our relationship with, uh, with, the, with the taxi industry, we were able, to, and, and our experience in the industry, we were able to create products which are much more affordable and which are geared specific to the taxi industry to help the business to actually be sustainable. And um, the taxi industry very much took positively to this because yeah. you had, you had um, your insurance has seen as a grudge purchase, you know? None of us really want to pay insurance, but we must. Um, but we started seeing guys who have fully paid the vehicles, guys who no longer have credit agreements, continuing with the insurance because we've done a lot of education into the industry as well to say, this is your primary source of income. This is your biggest business asset. If you get into an accident and this vehicle is written off, you're going back to nothing. So let us help you secure it. You know, and the industry understands that, and they they've always they have a want for it, but then the cost must be must must be relative to 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 to, to, to them as well for them to be able able to afford it. Um, and learnings internally from our side as well York came when we started understanding a few years into the insurance business. You know, we have I say taxi protect was our insurance business. And a few years into understanding that, we understood that you, know, you, you have to start looking at your cost of claims. Now you have to look internally to say, you've got your own business. I mean, we're also entrepreneurs at the end of the day, and we're learning as well. And we started to see that our cost of, our cost of claim was high. And that was because the parts we were using were very high. I mean, they were very expensive. Yeah. So we started learning to import our own parts. You know, we started importing our own, our own aftermarket parts for non-safety critical elements of the vehicle. We increased our own, our own workforce. We opened up our own panel beating here in, in, in Gauteng, uh, where about 260 vehicles are fixed on a monthly basis that are insured with us. Uh, we also have an, a, me a mechanical where, workshop where we now not only panel the outside, we can also look at the mechanics of the vehicle. So by the time a, a, a taxi has been in an accident, we have the parts readily available. The most important thing for an entrepreneur is time. Sure. Same thing happens for a taxi owner. The longer his vehicle is off, the road, off the road, the less money he makes. So our promise to them is we will get you back on the road as quickly as possible and give the best quality of your vehicle. And that's why we've now got the insurance, we've got the panel shop, we've got the parts that we imported which we use on the vehicles, and we've got the, 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 the mechanical workshop. So by the time we're done with that taxi, it's pretty, pretty spanking new and they can get back on the road as quickly as possible for the entrepreneur to continue making money. And as how we learned this was because of the relationship with the industry. Yeah. You know, we, we, we have had for many years a direct relationship with our customer where we try very hard to build our products and to build our offerings from the outside in. As, as, the, as, as, our, as, our, as our service network, which is basically the, the, the taxi industry, starts showing us what they need, what are their demands, and they come and they sit and they speak to us, we started creating better and better products where we stopped creating products from our own thinking, but rather more from their advice. And as soon as 2018, the industry actually bought 25% into 25% uh, shareholding stake into SA Taxi, mm -hmm. and now we have a formal relationship with Santaco, which is the biggest mother body of the taxi industry. And again, more and more learnings are coming at a bigger, at, at, a, at a more fluid flow. And I w I'd love to understand a little bit more 
the impact of SA taxi. Now, obviously, sometimes it's difficult to measure, sure. but how you, you, know, you talked about better education, understanding mm -hmm. or de-risking uh, your all eggs in one basket. Mm -hmm. So if your taxi does get involved in an accident, you come along and you support the mm -hmm. entrepreneur to get back up on their feet. What was this set from the outstart to make an impact? Or what have you learned in terms of the impact that you're making on, let's call these the entrepreneurs? So our biggest, our biggest drive from the onset as a business has always been that we need the industry to be sustainable. So we need the taxi industry to be sustainable. Right? So any and every venture that we've gotten into since the inception of our business has been in line with what will keep the industry sustainable. Okay, so first you have you, you get the access to capital. Yeah. So they get the finance. They're able to run that to start their businesses. Now, in that point, they've got a six-year contract with you where they're still paying off that, that asset. Now, if you don't help them to sustain their business and you treat them, and you don't treat them like the entrepreneurs that they are, so you just give them finance, you let them go, yeah. they have a chance to succeed, but they also have a chance, a higher chance to fail because the odds are against them everywhere else with higher this cost of so insurance, important. you know, um, lack of access to parts, all those things. So as we started seeing the failings within the industry of some of, based on our book, yeah. you know, we, we only have we only have ten percent of the total industry that we would have, that we have on our book. So based on our learnings from our own book, when we started as understanding why are some of these vehicles not I mean why are, why are some of these entrepreneurs failing? Yeah. Then you sit with them, you sit and you say, well, listen, you are on a profitable route. Why does your vehicle? Why, why was your vehicle non-operational? My vehicle was in an accident. I didn't have insurance. Okay, but then why couldn't you get insurance? Insurance was too expensive. That's when we learned. Okay, we need to actually start helping more of our books so we can de-risk ourselves, but de-risk for them as well. All right. So it's that, it's that, it's that what's good for me is good for you as well. And um, access to parts became a thing. So as we started, as as we started um, seeing that there's some vehicles which just we just can't fix, yeah. then we, there's those write-offs, right? Um, we then opened up a salvage yard because the industry, the taxi industry owners were telling us, guys, we are struggling to find parts. So we actually opened up our own salvage yard, we cleaned them up, and we made it a retail experience. So as opposed to going there in South Africa, you stand behind the glass and you, yeah. the guys go to the back and they find the part for you. With us, our owners get a trolley like you're going to, like, like you're going to a normal retail space. Yeah. You go put an engine in the trolley and come and pay for it, you know? The guys can now find almost every single part for their taxi in that space, which means that they can fix their cars, keep their cars more reliable, on the road longer, sustainable business, and also it's just safer for the commuter at the end That's of the exactly day it. because they have access to parts to fix the vehicle. And they have access to affordable parts to fix the vehicle, which means they have more reason to fix their vehicle because they can afford to. So it's that it's a symbiotic relationship that we have with the industry where what's good for us is good for them. And as, a, as such, as we keep going, we start learning that there's a greater shared value that we're creating for each other. This is such powerful advice oh, because in a way, you are playing almost the role of the organization that comes in in what is formally defined as an informal sector, mm -hmm. but it's by all intents and purposes, when you measure it, one of the biggest sectors. Absolutely. Yet you come into this wild west of a sector, unregulated or self-regulated yes, rather. Yes, yeah, and yes. through incentives, through education, through uh, financial support, through mentoring or some form of mentoring, you're actually taking this informal Wild West and actually formalizing it in a way. So it's, it's not, I mean, you know, it's, it's always us companies that come in and we sometimes forget that the education is two ways, you know. Nice. Um, we, we come in, <coughs> excuse me, we come in and, and, and the first thing we see, we saw when we came in was yeah. probably that this was a Wild West, you know. Yeah. But you come in there and you understand how formal this industry is, how well thought out, how structured it is. I mean, they go to elections for them to have leadership. They've got structures in place to help each other. They've got structures for conflict resolution. They've got structures for negotiating. They've got business wings. So as we came in, we learned. We, have, we were the first ones to learn that, okay, so this is not as Wild West as, as we might have even thought about. And, and a lot of the learnings out of that have become quite profitable for us, York, because where we would have, had we not had that close relationship with the industry, had we not consulted with the industry as much as we did, as we not taken a step back and taken a step away from ourselves, you know, our very smart selves, and we actually humbled ourselves to learning from them we would actually have failed a long time ago because we would have created products that meant nothing for them. 
I hear you. You know, so so the first, I think the first learning we had out of this was listen. Listen to your client, and our clients are always talking. And whenever they talk, sometimes you have to negotiate what you hear. You, know, you have to understand what you hear from a negotiating perspective, because you can't give your clients sometimes everything that they think they need, but then at the same time, you must give them everything that they definitely need as much as you possibly can. So all our growth, all our vertically integrated business units have grown from the conversations that we've had with the industry, from an understanding that there's a shared value opportunity in everything that we do. So we, we create shared value platforms for ourselves, for, yes. our, for, for, our, for our industry, which is the taxi industry, who we serve and service, as well as understanding that the, at the end of the day, the end customer for us and for the taxi industry is the commuter. So we need to make sure that, one, it's sustainable for the taxi owners to run this business because the commuter needs to get from point A to point B. And two, it's safe for the taxi to run this business because the commuter needs to get from point A to point B alive and safe. And that's what we and the industry that we serve have in common. We understand that the end customer is not the taxi industry. That is the main customer for us. But the end customer is the person who actually buys the goods from the taxi. That's what sustains the business. So we just support them to sustain the business. And this is driven from learning from our customer every single day. If we turn back the clock, how would this, would this have been as successful as it has been, had this been not a private company, but a NGO or a government uh, driven initiative, what differentiates, if you could give advice to other organizations around the world or other environments, mm. why was it so crucial or is it crucial for you to be a company? You know, sometimes, and this is, this is one of those um, capital mentalities, yeah. or capitalist mentalities I have, sometimes, you need to be driven by the profit to be able to not slack. You know, the shareholders hold you accountable all the time, you know? And I think I value our shareholders. I value them very much because they, they, they the board of the directors and the, and the shareholders hold us accountable in, in everything. I mean, the fact is, in as much as we are a privately owned company, we get impact funding, which means we are responsible to, in, in our reports back to our funders, to say what, what socioeconomic impact are you making? So that relationship that we have, where we are held accountable by our funders, by investors, and we're held accountable by our, by our shareholders and, and, our, and, our, and, our, and our big bosses at the end of the day. So do I think that it could have worked as a government, as, as a government initiative or an NGO? It might have, but I think sometimes the learnings are swifter when you have multiple uh, stakeholders looking at you and all of them looking at the same thing. What impact are you making? So yeah. um, our funders don't just give us money just for, for us to pay them back interests. They give us money and they say, for us to continue funding you, you need to show us what socioeconomic impact you're making. So when we, sp when we report back, we have to report back stats like we, we, we have direct, because of the fact that we fund uh, the, the, this, this, tag, this entrepreneur, yeah. each entrepreneur, according to the Department of Transport, each taxi owner that, we, that, that, gets, that gets funded, that gets a vehicle on the road, has a direct creation of 1.8 jobs for each taxi. So, so that accounts to about 450,000 450, direct jobs created by each taxi. All right. Of that, we have on our book, by if you extrapolate it onto uh, to the 32,000 we have on our book, it's around about 145,000 direct jobs that we've created. Now, I spoke earlier about the taxi hubs. Yeah. Now, I think also for the benefit of, of, of people who don't understand the taxi industry, um, in South Africa, you have taxi ranks. So mm -hmm. these taxi ranks is basically where the taxis all go and they wait for people. So in as much as this fixed route and they can pick people all, all the way around uh, on that route, they go to a central place um, in each business district where they wait for other people. So they go from point A to point B, and point A and point B are the taxi ranks. In those spaces, you have economic hubs that are growing. So you've got in there people who sell food, people who wash cars, people who, have, who sell clothes. So there's a whole other indirect um, a, a, a creation of, of employment that gets, that gets done there, and that's also a very high number that, that is created in each of those spaces. So we have to report on that. We, we simply have to go back every single time we do a report, and we will be held accountable to say, where's the impact that you're making? Where's the socioeconomic impact? We see the profits. We see the growth year on year of 20% or 23% or 25%, whatever it is that you're growing on year on year. We see it. But part of what you're responsibility is as a developmental credit provider 
is that you have to show impact into the socio-economic status of a, of, a, of a community you serve. And I think if you if you if you if you look at it that way, and some of the when you look at some of the challenges that our government has been facing, um, and it's it's open, and there's nothing that I'm saying out of turn here. There's there's less there's more scrutiny on us and more expectation on us as a private company at the moment, and that's why we succeed more. I love it. And tell me something. You, in a way, by consolidating services by having a, almost a centralized place from from a panel beating to the suppliers to the insurance to the finance are also in a position to introduce a lot more innovation into the space. Mm. Tell me a little bit about the SA Taxi's role in terms of, I suppose, if we want to drop the word, fourth industrial revolution, <laughs> but let's call it something more simplistic, in your role in ability or constraints in introducing innovation into this space. So, I mean, ours, I, I love saying that our, our, ours is, is, is a platform. You know, we, we have that which we are focused on within our, within our vertical inter, inter, integration, and that's what we're very good at, yeah. which is basically providing credit, providing insurance, providing the panel, and, and providing parts to the industry. But we obviously also are an influencer within the industry. You know, we, we, we can be a conduit of information. Of information. There's, there's a need for the industry to progress into this more technologically savvy you know, environment, uh, and as 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 we inter as we engage with companies that want to help the industry mm -hmm. move into this next uh, industrial revolution and, and to revolutionize them and make things more efficient for them, as we interact with them, what we do is we create a platform for communication. So in recent times, there's been an app that is being introduced into the industry where the guy where 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 the, where the entrepreneur to the taxis to owners. the taxi owners um, and to the mother body specifically okay. that we deal with, which is Antaco at the moment, um, and one of the challenges is, as a new person from different provinces in South Africa, when you come to a new province, is you don't know where all the taxi ranks are, you don't know where all the taxis go, you don't know how much the taxis cost. Just those three little things. And, you know, we're so used to you and I having an Uber app that can tell you everything. The taxi industry doesn't necessarily have that information. Yeah. And this uh, this gentleman had that information, I mean, had the ability to create that, that, that type of app, and we then just facilitated the conversations between the industry, which is the tax industry, and this person. Because again, it's not our expertise, but at the very same time, we understand the need. So ours is a facilitation role in some respects. And wherever we believe, I mean, we've got tech of our own. We, we, telematics is a, big, is a big thing in the, in the insurance industry. So we have a telematics division here at SA Taxi. So every single one of the 32,500 taxis that we finance goes out with telematics devices in them. So we are able to track the movement every single day where they are. And we, we've started now looking at opportunities to start informing them and helping them manage their fleets better through that. You know, so we can tell them about uh, where, where there's high accidents from zones. We can help the owners to geofence their taxis to make sure that if the taxi leaves that area, then it doesn't get, and, and, and it gets, we can be alerted. We can start telling them, that we start sharing information about where are the high accident times, and we know how much your driver has been, how, how much your taxi has been moving, what time it started moving, then we can start alerting you to whether or not you have a higher probability of an accident. So that's where, where we're using um, telematics technology and telematics information to start educating and informing and getting them to start now because they have access to that to that information as well themselves but the usage of that isn't necessarily as high and what way we're coming in is saying this is what you can actually do with this technology so it's available but let's just, let's, let's show you how to work yeah. with, with it better some of them are very adept at it a lot of them are very adept at it but to those that aren't adept at it we're now starting to show them the benefit of having tracking because you're paying for it every month anyway how can you use it best Amazing. Yeah. So there's other more and more and more technology and, and more and more innovations are coming up. And as as and when we get approached now, recently the conversations are around you know the ticketing system where the the, the industry wants now um, commuters to use cards to be really? able to integrate it. Yes, it came out. I would have thought intuitively cash is king. You know, kind of from Tradition. from other things that we can't discuss. Love. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> so cash has been king for many a year in the taxi industry, um, but. As of late, where there's a report that came out uh, from the Competition Commission, where the, the, the report basically was saying that the commission was basically saying to the government that they need to send, to, uh, they need to uh, subsidize the taxi industry. Currently, the taxi industry is not subsidized. You're transporting 15 million people per day. 66 and a half percent of all public passengers in the in the country, uh, in the country are, trans are transported by this industry. And, and yet, the money goes to it goes to the buses, goes to the trains. 
So the industry is saying, okay, if you don't want to give us the money directly, give it directly to the commuter in the form of a card, and then let us integrate the system. So then the commuter has money and the commuter can pay. Then you don't have to give us the money, you just give it to the commuters. Just to show the, the, they're trying to show the government that they're not trying to steal the money. They just want the commuter. At the end of the day, like I said earlier, the end customer is who we're all trying to serve. So that would obviously need to be on some form of card technology sure. and the conversations are ongoing and we are part of those conversations. That is so powerful. Tell me something, what advice would you give to organizations around the world that are watching this? So maybe governments, cities, municipalities, uh, uh, funding agencies, around launching and growing what you've experienced, such a powerful initiative. We talked about being a private company, talked mm -hmm. about listening, sitting down at a table. What are kind of the lessons that you've learned, uh, the advice that you would give other organizations that want to do this around the world? Get closer to your customer. You know, it's, it's, it's nothing new. There's no, there's no revolutionary message that I have for you. It's been said for years. The reality is how we, when, how we started was because we started understanding the customer. How we grew was because we got closer to the customer. And how we continue to get better is because we're getting even closer. We've got, we've got our customer sitting at the table. We literally have, it's a symbiotic relationship. That 25% ownership that the industry has in our company basically means that our success is their success because not only are they spending on us, but they're earning from us. So in as much as you possibly can, sit around the table as often as possible with your customer because everything you're doing is not for you, it's for them. Your entire profit center can sit right next to you if you allow them to. Brilliant. Thank you. That was truly insightful. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much for yours, York. Thank you for watching.